Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In last week's video, we took a look at FPP running a virtual matrix. And we looked at it running locally on our main show player. And we also looked at it when it was running as a remote player. So how do we set up a master remote relationship? What's it about and why would we want one? Now I've covered this video before back in FPP version 6, but if you haven't seen that one yet, we'll start again and do it from scratch with FPP at version 9. So why would we want a master remote setup? If we take a look at our regular FPP instance here, we can see that it's set up as usual, and if I go for my input outputs, then we have our outputs in here. At the moment, I've only got the one for my virtual matrix. But if I had more entries in here, we could have entries for our baldricks, for our genius boards, for our falcons, and so on. And all of the data would be set up in here, and it would send out to our various controllers come show time. Come show time. There you go, ting in a twast. But sometimes, that's not the right way to do things because we're sending a lot of traffic out onto the network. And sometimes the network, the computer network, may not be able to cope with all of that traffic, particularly on something like a virtual matrix where we're using a lot of channels. Now, looking at this, we've got 62,000 odd channels, which equates to around 20,000 pixels, well, each one having red, green, and blue. And using DDP at 40 frames per second, that's going to equate to about 20 megabits of data. Uh, it's got to go through the network from our show player through to our playback device to get everything working perfectly. Now, 20 megabits per second doesn't seem like a lot when it's on a gigabit Ethernet, uh, for example but it doesn't always play nicely. Let's have a look and I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna press play on the master player here. That's gonna send our data to our virtual matrix over ethernet out here. It's gonna run down to a small Netgear switch under the desk and then it's gonna come back out of that switch back up to our, our player pie here that has our HDMI connectivity to, in this case, our media switch that's going to be recording the output. But normally it would be to a TV or a projector, something like that. So let's just play the clip and we'll see what happens. So status control, status, play. Now, as we can see, that is mostly running fine but there are hiccups. We are getting tearing uh, through the middle of the image at points, and that is because the network is not keeping up with our, oh, look at those. That's because the network is not keeping up with the volume of traffic that's being sent through. E131 and DDP data is not forgiving when it's on a network. It needs to get there on time every time in order for the show to run nicely. There are no opportunities for buffering, for, cap, for any errors, retries, that sort of thing. So it has to go perfectly. Now, as I said, this is a gigabit network. Uh, the Pi 4 will run at a gigabit. The 3B Plus that we've got receiving here will only run at about 300 megabits per second. And we were only using about 20 megabits per second to send that data but as we saw, it wasn't always keeping up. And that's where your master remote mechanism comes into play. Instead of sending all of the show data, all 62,000 channels of show data across the network come showtime, we can simply take the same FSEQ file that we put onto our master and we can put it onto our remote a second pie that's just looking after the virtual matrix. 
Then come showtime, when we press play on the master, all it does is send tiny sync packets, synchronization packets, across the network to our remote Pi over here, and that tells the remote Pi what to do. It already has the sequence files loaded, just the same as the master does, and it can play the sequence. All it needs is these tiny sync packets to tell it what to do and how far through the sequence it should be. So it can adjust its timing very slightly at the far end to keep in time with the master. So how do we get this set up? Well, it's really straightforward in FPP. I've got a second instance of FPP built on here. It's, it's the same build, no, nothing to change there. We've just got to go in and change a few settings. And then over here on the original, on the player, we've got to change a couple of settings here as well to tell it that it's going to be sending multi-sync data to another Pi. So let's dive right in. I'm going to go with the remote first, conveniently titled remote up here at the top. And that's telling us down the bottom that there's been data coming in, but we don't want that to happen anymore. So I am going to go just check my input output setup, my channel outputs, and I've got nothing in the way of E131, but we could send E131 and DDP from this one, just the same as we're doing from that one. If, for instance, you've got half your house uh, set up on one remote Pi and the other half of the house set up on the other, you can split the two. The bit we check in, though, is our virtual matrix, which is under the other tab. And that's all set up. That's fine, ready to go, as we saw, because it was playing a moment ago. What we need to do here is we need to upload the sequence, first of all. Now, normally, we could do that from the master Pi, but there seems to be a bug, which I'll show you now. On the main player, if we go for status control multi-sync, all we need to do is to check multi-sync, send multi-sync packets and restart FPPD. That will then tell the master Pi to send remote packets and it's already picked up the fact that there is another Pi on the network. Now these don't have to be Raspberry Pis to run as master uh, remote. They can be any device running FPP. So a Culp, anything BeagleBone based, anything Pi based. I just tend to use Pis because that's what I've got lots of hanging about. So we've got both of those there. We can scroll down a bit and we can go to Action for Selected Systems. So I'm going to check the FPP9 remote, and I'm going to tell it that I want to copy show files and run, and it should be copying sequences. So I'm going to hit Run on that, and at this point, it should copy our sequence files across, but there seems to be a bug because we're getting an rsync error. So there's one for the devs to take up. Now this is FPP version 9 alpha, so I am expecting to find a few bugs. It just means that we're going to have to uh, send the files manually. So I'm going to go back to the remote and content setup file manager, and I'm just going to upload my sequence, which is on my desktop. There we go. That's my sequence file uploading. There we go, that's done. So we've got VM Butterfly FSEQ now available on the remote. And if I hit play, there we go, that works. That's playing nicely. The only other thing I need to do on the remote is to tell it that it is a remote. I'm gonna go down to the bottom to FPP mode down here and I'm going to change it from player to remote. FPP has restarted, and you can now see that our, our home page on here, if you like, the main page has reset itself to remote mode, and it's saying that it's waiting for multi-sync commands. 
So that is all ready to go. On the main player, if we go back to status and status, that is still in player mode and that is ready to go. I'm going to change my input output setup now, my channel outputs, because I don't want an output to send E131 anymore because we are going to be sending multi-sync packets instead of our E131 or DDP. So all that's going across the network are tiny multi-sync packets and they will tell this Pi what to do. So if I then go to status control and status and I hit play, there we go. There is our butterfly sequence now running on the remote Pi without any jitters, tears, bugs of any sort. It's just playing. And this is what Master Remote is all about, getting us a nice, happy sequence that's doing its thing without any issues. Now, because of the low volume of data that's traveling between these two, this end one could be on Wi-Fi. Um, you might even be as bold as to set up a tether on your Master Pi and connect the remote over the tether. And then, Tiny packets just need to traverse the Wi-Fi just to say, we're playing this sequence, we're starting now, get on with it. And this Pi over here will do just that. So there we are, a fairly short one today, uh, introducing FPP9's master and remote functionality, why we need it to reduce the amount of data traversing the network, uh, come showtime, makes the whole thing a lot more efficient. There's a little bit of work to do in setting it up. You've got to make sure that your relevant show files are on the right devices or on both devices. And But I'm sure the multi-sync fix, uh, sorry, the update to sort out our sync so you can just simply copy files from one to the other will be fixed shortly. Once the files are on there, we've set up the remote pyre remote player into remote mode. That's then ready to go. On the main player, we just went into status control multi-sync and we enabled the send multi-sync data checkbox. We were then able to hit play on our sequence. The master sent the multi-sync data, the remote received it and started playing the sequence. And if we had data going out to Baldrick's E131 or DDP to Baldrick's Colts, probably not Colts because they should be remotes, uh, Baldrick's, um, Falcons, Genius, etc., that would be going out at the same time as the multi sync packets. So the whole thing would come together and run nicely. That's it for this week. Have fun, take care. See you on the next one.